It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. It's the comic book show. Yeah. Welcome to Twin Galaxies Live, where every Wednesday at 9 p.m. PST to 11 p.m. PST, we do the comic book show. We've gathered an all-star cast of comic book experts to bring you this week's comic book news, reviews, previews, and discussion. And our very special guest tonight, Mr. Eric Basaldua, prolific comic art uh, cover artist, and also uh, the top artist over at Top Cow for quite a while. Yeah, I worked there for 10 years, and I worked for Zenosco for uh, another, like, five or seven nice. or something like that. And finally, I'm now my own boss. Like, I'm, I'm trying to put out my own thing. Very cool. You've done work for DC Comics, Aspen, just Dynam about everybody. Dynamite, Dynamite. Uh, Aspen, yeah, DC. I, I've done Wolverine, you know. Nice. Uh, I drew a Spider-Man. Jealous! Uh, so, we've got, so we've got your art up in the middle screen here. Uh, oh, that's and it's, Wonderland. It's showing off here. So as, as you can see, Ebaz here, uh, as his fans know him, uh, yeah, he know him for his... Uh, amazing artwork on the posterior. Is that fair for me to say? No, that's that was terrible because you're a woman. I, I'm known for drawing <laughs> um, just booties and boobs. That's, that's my specialty. Um, <laughs> like I could draw literally, which I have, just a butt. And <laughs> it sells for hundreds of dollars. It's ridiculous. And I can draw the flash and like it won't sell at all for like eight <laughs> bucks on eBay. Like nobody wants to see me drawing dudes and <laughs> at all. This is the segment of the show that is called The Daily Planet. It is where we bring you... Oh, you were doing good. Finish it off. It yeah. is where we bring you this week's comic book news. So we span uh, the entire gamut of comic book stuff. We have movie news, comic book book news, uh, any kind of other media. We cover it here. This is where you get caught up. This past week, uh, a certain someone tweeted this picture. Let's bring that up, uh, the first picture of Neo. Uh, it's chimichanga time. Hey guys, it was Ryan Reynolds, so people started to assume that maybe this was a hidden message that he's finally signed on to be Deadpool once again in the solo film that's announced to come out in 2016. A few minutes later, Fox was sure to uh, confirm it, and yes, he's wow. coming back. So he's both Green Lantern and Deadpool? Uh, they're pretending that uh, Green Lantern, Green Lantern never happened, happen. and they're pretending that Deadpool never happened. Regular water, tap water. Batman vs. Superman has reportedly wrapped filming. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 We're hearing tons of news about the film over the next year before its release, even about how a certain lovable Batman character who won't be in the Batman vs. Superman because he's dead. What are you, are you excited at all, Eric, about the uh, Batman Superman movie? Absolutely not. Anything that DC makes it usually is not very good, except for Batman. They finally got some yeah. awesome DC movie. I mean, like, it's just, to stick those two together, it's just, it's gonna be, it's gonna be awful. It's gonna have wonderful moments. It's gonna, it's gonna be nostalgic. It's gonna be great, but. Ultimately a mess. I, I, I want to have like the lowest expectations so I can just love it when I, when I go in there. Well guys, uh, the Krypton show we reported on a few we weeks ago has been confirmed. Sci-Fi and Warner Horizon Television, Ahav, teamed up with David S. Goyer and Ian Goldberg to produce the Superman prequel, which will revolve around Superman's godfather, as he, or grandfather, as he brings hope and equality to Krypton. The show will indeed be named Krypton, and they have even released a logo. Check so we it! Check out the photo right now. Whoa, it looks like a new energy drink. Get him! Ugh! Oh, oh, I totally wasn't aiming for today. you, Neo. With that, we move right into our next segment, which is... It's the Danger Room. <laughs> yes, so guys, it's Marvel vs. DC. It's the best of five rounds, and you guys that are in the chat, so if you're watching this on the Stanley World of Heroes website, uh, YouTube channel, you're probably like, oh, Marvel, 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 or DC, DC, DC. That doesn't count. You need to, <laughs> DC, you need to uh, watch the tune live in show. for the live broadcast, which happens every Wednesday. Well, almost every Wednesday, because I think we're going to have a little holiday hiatus. Yeah. Uh, but almost every Wednesday from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at TwinGalaxiesLive.com. For round one, I'm presenting Injustice Gods Among Us Year 3, number five. This issue is packed full of special guest appearances, as everything is with Injustice. There's a lot of characters that they're throwing into the central conflict of Superman going bananas and totally crazy with power um, in the aftermath of uh, the death of Lois Lane. Shazam, who is completely under the mystique of Superman at this point, decides to transport Constantine 
and they're flying through the air and the only person that can now rescue Constantine is of course Dead Man who does what he does best which is to possess Shazam mid-air. What's really interesting about Dead Man being in Shazam's head is that he says, hey, I'm not here alone. There's this little kid here, right? So he's talking to Billy Batson and Billy Batson is trying to convince him that Superman is doing the right thing always and uh, Dead Man's like, well, I have control of your body and uh, Billy Batson's like, no, you don't. And he yells Shazam and he turns into a tiny little boy midair and it's hilarious. It shows how Billy is willing to sacrifice himself for a grander cause. I'm talking about Access Revolutions number three. Uh, so in the beginning of the story, uh, someone wearing an X-Men costume is robbing a bank. Who might you ask? It's f Kitty Pride with machine guns. Uh, Kitty reveals that this isn't a robbery. The CEO is secretly funding anti-mutant lobbies. Uh, that's the reason why she's robbing the bank. What do we have? Ooh, DC. All right, guys, for round two, DC is presenting Justice League 3000 number 12. We've never presented this book before because it's terrible, but guess what? This one's amazing. Want to know why? Because it's a Booster Golden Blue Beetle story. Somehow they fell asleep in the uh, 20th century in cryotubes and got teleported all the way into the future. Earth has been turned into a prison planet, and of course it's the old Booster Gold Blue Beetle hijinks, where Blue Beetle can't stop complaining about his blood sugar and his hypoglycemia, and Booster Gold can't stop complaining that he's not famous, and then they run into this guy who's a fat version of Blue Beetle and you're like, uh, what the hell? Uh, hello, Internet. Um, I'm, a, I'm an artist. I do that for a living. I didn't start reading comics until I was about 25, so I don't know what I'm doing. But over here we can see um, uh, some of the things. That I, I've always been a Marvel fan because they just always been great art to the table. And if you look here, you know, we got like a massive, like, like impactful storytelling. Um, this entire page over here only has like two little specks because uh, it's always... They always really focus on energy and, and storytelling and movement. Out of nowhere, these guys come up uh, and all of a sudden like start kicking more ass over here. The figures are really small, but again, uh, it helps show like the energy and the movement. Oh, it's, it's closed. closed. It's That's gonna be closed. Yeah. No, Marvel takes it. Dude, Boom! Let's see. Yep. Oh, oh, it oh, oh, it's tied. Oh, come it's on. It's a perfect tie. Okay, so guys, I'm presenting Death of Wolverine, the Weapon X program number three. So guys, this team of experimental test subjects from the Weapon X program are actually searching for Sabretooth to, to get some answers. They find Sabretooth, uh, and he starts to, t of course, Sabretooth starts attacking. Uh, Wolverine's in uh, Sharp's mind saying, what did you think you were gonna have a conversation with Sabretooth? He only fights. One of the team members pounds Sabretooth uh, to the ground, uh, but Sharp has a conversation with uh, uh, Sabretooth. Oh my goodness! DC presents Detective Comics number 37. Now, this is drawn by a good buddy of ours, Francis J. Manipal, uh, who does phenomenal art in this book. Like, I gotta say, this just looks awesome. It starts off with a great little story about Jervis Tetch, who's freaking out because it's the holidays and a lot of mentally ill people don't do very well around the holidays, guys. Seriously, my uh, weird side story. We're not gonna go into that. Um, but it's uh, kind of tragic because he's out searching for Alice uh, and Batman shows up to take him out. Again, incredible art. And takes out Jervis Tetch by dropping him through the lake that he's fighting on where they find the skulls of a lot of his past Alice victims. We get to see a lot of Harvey Bullock working with Batman. Again, these one page splashes are just beautiful. Uh, I mean, you gotta give it to it. That's amazing. If uh, our calculations yep. are correct, yeah, which they always true. are, because Guru's manning the pole, which means we get to put the dead tally mark and we can finally move on from the expansion. All right, so guys, it's the Infinity Gauntlet. It's where you, the audience, give us suggestions of who's gonna fight. Normally what we do is we do, who would you wanna see in a fight? Like Captain Crunch versus well, who Gumby. Who would win in a fight? But oh. instead of a fight, we're doing who's got the better boobs this time. Supergirl's, Supergirl's boobs, boobs versus Catwoman's, Catwoman's boobs. boobs. Uh, Supergirl's boobs are gonna heavy. win because they're. I would go with Catwoman. Yeah. They're made out of steel, steel they're made nipples. Out of, yeah, they're like impenetrable. And stuff. Oh, you know what? I, I think oh. Supergirl takes it. Supergirl could like carve her like a thing in like a piece of glass. Like you guys, Catwoman yeah. couldn't do that. I so got hard. really confused because uh, you guys are saying who has the better boobs, and in my head I thought whose boobs would win in a fight against each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, no, my no, let's no. go with Catwoman. Catwoman's Catwoman. boobs are better. Uh, I think Catwoman's boobs are bigger. They're I think bigger, boobs for sure. Are better. 
Uh, I haven't seen Plus, with Supergirl's costume these days, she's got the neck all the way up to here and Can't the weird arm. Can't even see them. Like, she's, she's wearing same thing these with Catwoman, so. except the video yeah, game Yeah, but she one. always unzips. Chill makes the best point ever. Who's, you know, one's this one's conversation one's completely one's depends on the artist drawing the boobs. This is true. It is if true. If I was drawing it, all the boobs I drew would win. That's true. <laughs> Every single one. We gotta thank Ebaz for joining us here as our Thank special you. guest doing the entire comic show with us on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. PST is when we do this show every single week. Thank you for watching. Bye. Toodles. See you guys next Vote week. Marvel next week or I quit. Twin Galaxies. No. Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. Whoa. That's awesome.